This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org. Welcome to another edition of Maui Causes and the Citizens Initiative television show here on Akaku. I'm Sam Small, uh, joined in the studio by Sleepy John and Todd Swan. Thank you guys for uh, helping make the magic happen electronically and thank you eternally to Akaku for existing at all uh, and giving us a voice, an opportunity to have a voice in this community because if it were not for Akaku, you wouldn't hear any of this stuff. Um, we talk about things on this show that are not typically the conversation at uh, the you know polite uh, 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 official gatherings because the intention of these conversations is to be specifically a positive disruption of the status quo. That is a necessary ingredient in a free democracy. And if ever there was a free democracy that needed to be restored, um, it is here in Maui County. This is an oppressed society uh, living under uh, the thumb of a plantation mentality and system for over 125 years, and it's time to change. Uh, you know, the rest of the nation, the rest of America is uh, just beginning to wake up to the fact that they've been dominated by corporate control and they are just beginning to react, um, you know, in lots of dysfunctional ways and in empowerment ways as well. Uh, people here in Hawaii have been living in an oppressed society for 125 years and they truly suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. <clears throat> the symptoms are everywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it is our job uh, to empower this community to take back control. Why? Because we can. We have an opportunity using social media. We have an opportunity using these airwaves that are available to us um, to be able to share a message of empowerment. Now is the time. We started something here on Maui in 2014 with the Shaka movement. This show is an outgrowth of Vote Here, uh, Vote Yes Maui. That's what we created in support of the Shaka movement and the GM moratorium. Uh, that successful, magical event that happened here in Maui County brought together a community. Um, and we have been dubbed the the H factor. Uh, down uh, in the mayor's office, they now talk about the H factor. It's a consideration, it, <laughs> although it must be a small consideration because the stuff that they are doing, I submit, is criminal. And they are exploiting this community, they are exploiting you, your children, and the resources of Maui County in a variety of ways. Everything is skewed towards the developers. Everything is skewed to making profits at the cost of the general public and the environment. There has been for 40 years no global perspective on what development will do to these islands. It was set off in the beginning that the hotels would be upscale hotels, and I think that that was a good decision. That's the last time anybody considered it. The Maui Island Plan has been trashed by the administration. They are not following it. They are making up the rules as they go, as it suits them, and as it suits the donors and the people that they are connected to. Those are money interests. Those are interests that are extracting and exploiting the natural resources of this island. And they will continue to do so for as long as you let them. As long as you let them. We have the mechanisms in place. We do have an opportunity to vote here in Maui County. And it is your job to shed this notion that, oh, not voting uh, is, is, is something that, uh, voting is a bad thing. I hear it from a lot of people still, that, oh, voting is validating an illegal system. Well, I'm sorry to say that there'll be nothing left if, 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 if sovereignty ever does happen in some form, there'll be nothing left to salvage if you don't take the opportunity that is in front of us now. 
we started a movement, the H Factor, the hippies, howlies, and the Hawaiians, all working together with a common goal of preserving these islands, preserving Maui County in a, in a, uh, so that the children growing up here today can continue to have a lifestyle that, that is in respect, that is healthy, in respect to the environment, that is not exploitative. And the current path of development is exploitative and will, has been, and will continue to destroy this island for as long as we let it continue. So, we bring you lots of different issues on this show. A lot of it has to do with how development has uh, occurred and the changes that need to be made in the county structure so that development can continue, but in a respectful and considered way. Expanding the airport into an international destination will not be in the best interests of your children. We do not have the infrastructure to support the additional traffic. If you want to continue uh, to sit in traffic jams every day, if you want to, uh, to, to have to construct the course of your daily life around traffic jams the way that people do in Oahu, well, that's happening right now here in Maui. People coming over from the west side, even people coming from Kihei trying to get to Kahului are having to structure their days according to traffic jams. You think that's going to get any better? There's, there are thousands of, of homes, of residential structures that are already permitted, that are in process, moving towards being built. Two and a half vehicles per household. That's 45,000 more cars that will be hitting the streets here in the next couple of years. We do not have the infrastructure for that. We have systemic problems. The way that our county government is structured and the way that our county government runs supports fraud and it supports exploitation of the environment. And it needs to stop. We have the opportunity to stop. Your vote makes the difference. Look for candidates in November who are in support of change, transparency, and a well-considered development rather than rampant development. I'm proud to wear this t-shirt for Trinette Furtado. She ran for county council in 2016 and she'll be running for county council again in November. She has been working for council member Olika Atai uh, since uh, 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 January 1st, 2017. She's been in the belly of the beast. She's been educating herself and learning how the system works. We're talking about an MIT graduate. This is, this is a very, very smart woman. When I met her, I and realized that she was had political ambitions, it immediately uh, 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 was a vision for me that Trinette Furtado will one day be the governor of Hawaii. She is that capable. And she is a candidate running for county council in 2018. You will have an opportunity to elect a Hawaiian woman to replace Mike White. What better replacement can you imagine for someone who works as a general manager for the hotels and skews everything that he possibly can in the county business towards the benefit of those business interests? Every step of the way, nothing is done by, by, by he and his ilk to support the people who actually live here. It's all about business. It's all about profits. None of that supports you or your family or your children. Growing up here on Maui is absolutely a phenomenal, phenomenal gift. And we want to keep Maui in some semblance. It may, in a lot of ways, it's, you know, kind of too late. But we can keep it from getting truly out of hand and we have the resources to do it if you participate. Even educating yourselves. You know, a lot of people, when they do go to vote, only vote for county council in the district that they live in. 
That's not right. That's you have the right and the obligation to vote for council members in all nine districts. There should be no empty boxes on your ballot. That is a message that we hope to get out to people and educate this community as we get closer to the 2018 election in November. And even the election in August, the primaries, which are very important here in Maui County. We have extraordinarily low voter turnout and that needs to change. Maui Causes is dedicated to all of these initiatives and we beg your support. You can go to MauiCauses.org, see what it is that we're about, and participate by making some kind of contribution. We really need some support, especially as we go towards the November elections. Uh, there's a lot of voter registration to be done, and it does cost money to do this stuff. Um, so please do make uh, a, 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 a contribution. The healthier, the, the larger, the better. We need your support. Okay. Um, in that context, we like to be able to bring to the, 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 you, um, you know, the positive side, what's, what's good about Maui and how Maui does express um, these wonderful attributes in its children. Um, who grows up here on Maui and, and what do they do? Um, and uh, I have as our guest here in the studio, Pat Simmons, Jr. Um, who represents a wonderful blend uh, of Maui, growing up here on Maui, um, as well uh, growing up in a true rock and roll family. Um, you know, you, uh, uh, Pat Simmons Jr., well, Pat Simmons Sr. is the lead guitarist for the Doobie Brothers. Um, and uh, that has given you, Pat, a, a, a very uh, particular, a very distinct uh, life. Um, and um, thank you for coming on the show, and and let's get into it a little bit. Yeah. What what was it like growing up here on Maui? And what, how, how do you think Maui has informed you as a as an individual? Mm. Yeah, I just want to say mahalo for having me. Yeah. Stoked to be here, and yeah, there's a lot to Maui that a lot of people don't see, and. Um, you know, Maui life is, is a gift. And for me, I was, you know, I first came to these islands as a tourist, as a Malihini <laughs> visitor. But young one. And I was four years old when I first came here and um, in 1994. And my, my family fell in love with it and found a relatively inexpensive piece of property, which a lot of people do. And um, we moved on to it in 1997 where I've been um, my entire life here for the past 21 years on the same piece of property I was raised on. And um, yeah, it's been really special to, to grow up in the community and to be accepted as, as, um, as a Kama'aina, really. Um, you know, I grew up with, I went through public school system here and, um, and private school as well. But uh, I've grown up around the country and the country life. And I've seen a lot of changes to these islands and this place. And, um, I feel really, really blessed that I can wake up and go surf and go, you know, walk into a store and know everyone in the store who's shopping in the morning and, and um, you know, anywhere I go, I know people I've, everywhere. It's like one big ohana, so. It is. Um, yeah, I'm, I know that this place um, is special to a lot of people. And um, like I said, I've seen a lot change and I, I'm really looking forward to, to how um, we can evolve here and, and, and truly make it the paradise that we all want to see. And it is, you know, life here on Maui is very different than uh, um, what you've been exposed to through your father's rock and roll career. I mean, you've, yeah. you've seen both, <laughs> both sides. Yeah, I mean, by the time I was like, you know, not even in, in the double digits of age, like probably eight years old or something, I had been to all 50 states in America and, um, been to all major cities of the U.S. and 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 elsewhere, you know, throughout the the world internationally, and um, I've seen, I've seen what what the rampant development has done to the world. And I grew, I was born in a very really, very rural place in Northern California, um, so I've I was born in a rural place, and then I moved to a rural place when I was small. So, both my homes that I've had have been in the country. So I've always been raised around the plants and the wild water and the waves, and um, and the trees amongst all my travels with my father and 
And um, I've you know, grown up in, in hotels and on tour buses throughout the world. But at the same time, I always returned to Haiku and the North Shore of Maui where I was just another local kid, you know, surfing Ho'okipa and like skateboarding and jumping waterfalls and opening coconuts and just, you know, hiking around barefoot in the jungle. So <laughs> harvesting fruit. <laughs> and that's that's the precious Maui lifestyle. That is that is what so many, you know, people living here on Maui, you know, really love and appreciate about that kind of lifestyle. You know, to be able to go out in your own backyard, you know, and 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 harvest a rack of of bananas and and bring it in and and feed your family on 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 that. Um, and be a part you know, of, of you know, the, the farmer's market community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, 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 just this last week, you were performing at the Saturday market up in Pukalani. Yeah, um, I'll be there actually this Saturday again, but I'm not be, gonna be performing guitar. I'll be actually opening coconuts because I'm a pretty skilled coconut machete wielder. Mm -hmm. So uh, my friend who sells coconuts up there, Coconut Willie, Will Hunt, he, uh, he, I'm helping him out. Um, this Saturday, I'm going to be opening coconuts there, so um, that's one of my other skills. <laughs> well, and having that kind of community <clears throat> through a farmer's market, um, it's a very diverse uh, a set of community members that come through that market on Saturday mornings up mm -hmm. in Pukalani. Um, it's really a delicious, delicious community feeling that, uh, that, that goes on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and th you know, thank you for supporting it, and thank you for Automatic. supporting all of you know. You you were uh, supportive during the GM moratorium. Yeah, um, went and registered hundreds of people, probably at least a hundred people to vote. You know, a few years ago. <laughs> you and your dad uh, performed at a, a fundraiser for Kelly King mm -hmm. um, back in 2016. So thank you for supporting uh, a, a progressive candidate. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, and and you know we look forward to you know your support and your ideas of you know how th things should go this coming November. Um, there are candidates that are coming forward because of the, the support that that you you know been able to give and others. Mm -hmm. um, there are candidates that are coming forward that see the opportunity for us to uh, evolve Maui County beyond the small. You know, a lot of communities go through this as they grow. Um, they start out for many many years very insular, very family controlled, and a few different groups groups of people have full control over what goes on. And if you're lucky, they're not corrupt. Um, you know, yeah. if you're not so lucky, then they're exploitative. And here in Maui County, it's evolved to a point of exploitation. That maturity is a very difficult process for a community go to go through because the newcomers who come in and, and live here and under begin to understand what's going on, they begin to force change and the powers that be typically resist. And that's kind of where we're at. And uh, you know, I just want to interject and say that you know, this is such a small island in the grand scheme of the world, and um, geographically. <laughs> and um, somebody reminded me of this little, you know, notion recently: is that you know, if we can't do it here, if we can't make Maui um, more sustainable and more um, awake, then where can we do it? Right. You know, this is such a small island, and we have a huge opportunity to. To um, to make um, a positive impact and you know positive change here, yep. so and the world it's looks worth to it. Maui. The, the, the world really does pay attention to what goes on on Maui. And there's only one Maui, you know. It's like we could, you know, I'm not 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 picking favorites, you know, too much. Trying not to, but but yeah, there's only one Maui, and you know, those of us who are Kamaina here know that it's a special place, and that the culture and the lifestyle and the Aina need to be restored for the future generations, not just yeah. us, you know. Yeah. Voting for uh, an Ohana-style candidate this election year is not really even about us or, or um, the community, really. It's about the future community. It's about the ones that are gonna come after us and the policies that these politicians may make are going to affect whether we know it or not, they're going to affect the future generations yeah. and the lifestyle that they're going to live and the Absolutely. water they're going to be able to drink and the wa food that they're going to be able to eat and, um, and the oceans that they're going to be able to access for their food and fun. So it's, um, there's a lot of things going on here. <laughs> if they can even access them at all. I mean, that's, that's part of what's, you know, we're, we're, we're at these, all these different tipping points, you know, where development has gotten so far 
um, that local people are denied access to the oceans. Um, the corporate mentality, the corporate exploitation of the resources um, has gone so far that they're even taking up occupying the beach space. Here we are having to, the community having to rise up and call attention to the fact that the hotels are illegally placing rental uh, umbrellas and chaise lounges on the beach in an illegal fashion. Um, they're allowed to have rentals, but the person renting has to be there to occupy the, the, the beach furniture at that moment. But instead, they're laying out the entire beach and filling the beach with empty rental <laughs> thing. It's a small thing, but it's indicative. It shows the mentality that they think they are entitled to what is the public's. Yeah, Maui is, you know, a lot of people f see Maui and the Hawaiian Islands as a, um, as a playground, you know, for the wealthy people and people who can afford to come and visit here. So, and at one point my family came over here to visit because we thought it was awesome as well. <laughs> and then we realized that it was truly a beautiful place and a special place and decided to, my father decided to raise his family here. And um, it's, it's more than just a, a, a playground. <laughs> It can be a playground well, for sure. <laughs> oh, it can, you know, and there's nothing, that, that, that's the thing, there's nothing wrong with development. There's nothing, and it was a very intelligent deci decision for, for uh, you know, m the, 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 the administrations here in the county, you know, 40 years ago to, you know, decidedly skew development towards upscale development so that hotels would be built, but they would have to be really good hotels, world-class hotels, not just crap stuff um, and that has you know to some extent protected the in, the the um, the texture and the quality of our environment but the concentration of it now is becoming overwhelming the the they've never really looked at the carrying capacity how much development can the island sustain before the economics, the culture, and the environment crashes and burns and Burn, becomes yeah. like Oahu? And uh, that's the concern that that uh, they they're overdoing it, and they're and we risk losing the quality of life that we so beautifully enjoy here in Maui. Yeah. And for me, I'm a father now, which is a unique opportunity that I've been given and decided to embark upon. And, Congratulations. Um, I have a year and a half old son, and so a lot of my life is around my family now, even more. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and a lot of my music as well. Um, you know, a lot of my songs are coming out in my, in my world you know, about what I'm doing. And, and um, it's, yeah, it's an inspiring time. So <laughs> you have a song then that- Sure, uh, yeah. Got a couple songs, and um, this first one here I want to share is a um, pretty recent song. I've got a, uh, an album I'm going to be working on this spring, all the new original material, and um, some of the songs are old and some of them are new. Um, this is a newish one that came out um, not long ago, and um, it's called Decisions. And as I get older, I realize there's a lot more decisions I have to make in my mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. and, um, but they're mine to make. So this is called Decisions. <laughs> trees and the breeze as my witness with the rocks and the trees and the breeze as my witness I'm gonna make my own decisions I spend the day in my garden Tending the food, but I'll enjoy a morning surfers. 
The sun can be hot when I'm not in the shade Ain't no time like now, it's mine to deserve Cause I am a man now A father and a husband And I'm gonna make my own decisions I'm gonna make my own decisions With the rocks and the trees and the breeze as my witness With the rocks and the trees and the breeze as my witness I'm gonna make my own decisions Listen into my heart 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 There's more to our show in just a moment. This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org. Welcome back. We're here with Pat Simmons, Jr., um, who just gifted us with a song. Uh, and um, we'll have a couple of more songs uh, before our program is over. Um, you have um, concerns, I know, for all the things that, that we're talking about, uh, and you, in your own ways, you take direct action to have an impact on the environment. I know you're the, the steward of your own land um, <laughs> and, and uh, working that as, a, as a, a growth opportunity and an environmental opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, what are your, what's your relationship to the land, your personal relationship to the land? <sighs> that's a solid question. <laughs> uh, that's a question that I hope everyone gets asked eventually. <laughs> it's, what, it's one of the beautiful <coughs> opportunities to in living on Maui is to have a relationship with the land. Most right? people don't get to do that. Yeah, right. So and that's what we want to protect here. Automatic, yeah. So, I mean, my, I've been on the same piece of property since I was seven years old. Mm -hmm. So that's 20, 20 little, bo little, bit over, little bit over 20 years. And um, I've seen the trees grow seen things change. Um, the relationship I have with my land now is different than it was when I was a little kid. Well, you're, you're a grown man now. You're, you're making decisions. Yeah, you're so, a father. And yeah, so now I'm a, a father, and, and that's, um, that's been a big um, inspiration lately with my own land is <clears throat> feeding my family, planting the trees so that my son can eat from the trees, and then his kids from eat, can eat from the trees, and so on. So. Um, yeah, I, I came up with a really um, inspiring uh, New Year's resolution that really just fell into my lap. Um, I'll tell you a brief story about it. I had a friend who's a vegan, radical vegan, much love to the radical vegan community. You know, I was <laughs> one at one point myself, I have total respect, but um, my friend posed a question or a, 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 you know, a comment with me about how um, the amount of deforestation mm -hmm. on the planet is often due to the amount of people eating meat. And so as, a, as per someone who consumes meat myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, locally hunted meat and you know, wild caught, um, I took it upon myself to change that statistic of um, the amount of X amount of forest, rainforest being cut down so people can eat meat. Mm -hmm. um, I took that, that notion and, and and made it my New Year's resolution to plant 31 new trees on my family's land um, for the first month of the year. Mm -hmm. So I'm committed now to doing 30, to planting 31 trees in 31 days. Every day. And today I believe is the um, 23rd day of the year, a day of the month. And so today I planted my 23rd tree. Mm -hmm. um, and I really <laughs> thank you to my good friend, 
uh, out there for inspiring me with and really challenging me with um, with that because it, it really woke me up and and, and made it happen because um, you know reforestation is something I think about a lot for the future generations and for the health of the environment and the health of the water trees really play a huge role in that and I have a degree in ecology and um, so I've studied forest ecosystems for a long time and so yeah today I planted a Kamani tree Mm -hmm. which is a Hawaiian um, canoe plant tree that was brought here for its um, many, many uses. And so, uh, um, yeah, tomorrow will be day 24, and I'll be planting my 24th tree. What are you going to plant? Not quite sure yet, but I've been mixing it up and trying to plant different things every day. For, a, for about a week there, I planted coconuts every day. Mm -hmm. So I got six, I have seven new coconut trees. Um, so uh, I've been planting a lot of native trees and uh, multi-purpose windbreak trees, but just a tree, a useful beneficial tree that's gonna produce something of benefit to the future generations, whether that's food or fiber or wood or medicine, uh, I'm committed. So that's that's my New Year's resolution. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Uh, do you have another song for us? Sure, yeah. This, uh, this next song, um, again, these, these three songs I'm gonna share are not recorded yet, so um, look, look out for my next CD coming um, at some point. <clears throat> it's called Justice, and I wrote this song a while ago. <clears throat> yeah, just realizing that there's so many things that need justice in this, in, in this world, and our environment is my priority at the moment, so it's called Justice. <laughs> Done about the water, the streams and the sea. Seen so much disrespect shown to our home. There's justice on the rise upon the morning sky. Another day for peace Conscious cakey on the rise When I look up to the trees And the trees look down on me I pray for their freedom They pray for my humility there's justice on the rise Upon the morning skies Another day for peace Conscious cake on the rise Have you thought about the creatures Living in your home Seals and whales and birds and bees Trying to live in harmony They wonder why some can't see There's justice on the rise Upon the morning skies Another day for peace Conscious kicking on the rise Justice on the rise Upon the morning skies Another day for peace Conscious kicky on the rise
Pat Simmons Jr. Uh, with us here in the studio. Uh, thank you, Pat, for, for your music and, uh -huh. and carrying on a rich tradition. I know you come from a performing family, really on all sides. I've, uh, Chicky, your, your grandma, your, your mom's mom, um, was you know, just a, a dear woman. I so enjoyed getting to know her uh, 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 down at Kalama Heights. Uh, my mom was there and Chicky was there at the mm -hmm. same time and, and <laughs> they both passed now. Wow. Um, and uh, my mom was was a theatrical person as well, involved in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, so my role models were were the director. You know, <laughs> there we were at a local theater company and uh, off 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 Broadway. Uh, but uh, the directors were high quality, uh, experienced people, and I was inspired. And I know Chicky had a also had uh, you know quite a performance career and, and quite a character. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so, and your music, you know, experience, you've been exposed to, you know, quality music uh, from, from a child, and it, uh, it's obviously uh, had an impact on you. Your music is strong, your performance is professional, and, and it's really great to see. Mahalo, thank you. I've had an amazing influence, you know, my father, and amongst, um, amongst so many influences, um, you know, I grew up listening to Bob Marley and, um, you know, music with message. So <laughs> that's that's one thing I'm trying to try to utilize my music and my art for is to um, share good positive messages and and talk about true stories. It's all true story. <laughs> right. And so you mm -hmm. are performing uh, more and more locally. Uh huh. Where can people have an opportunity to see you perform? Um, every Friday lately, I've been at um, Cafe des Amis in Paia. Mm -hmm little uh, crepe place right across from Mana Foods. Right, very um, sweet little spot. Sometimes I sub and, you know, play other nights. Uh, other, other, um, sometimes I don't make it on a Friday night because I got right. something else going on. But most Friday nights I'm there. And um, really to get the, the update about where I'm playing and to be um, up to date about it is to check out my website. And that's patsimmonsjr.com, patsimmonsjr.com. And then I'm on Facebook and Instagram and all that. And people can get, um, the updates through where I'm playing that way. And um, tonight I'm playing at, um, I know this this probably won't be aired um, live obviously, but tonight I'm playing at uh, Fleetwoods on Front Street. Great. I'm um, getting the opportunity to share some of my North Shore country stories with the West Side. And How long a set will you do there? I'm playing from six to 9.30, but oh, I'll wow. probably, probably take a break or two in there. Yeah, well that's a full show. So yeah. probably, probably at least two and a half hours of music. That's fabulous. Yeah, and I'm playing a lot of cover songs and traditional Hawaiian songs and some Brother Is thrown in there and some John Cruz and um, yeah, some blues music and folk music. And there is uh, also some touring uh, uh, coming up? Yeah, I wanna put the shout out there um, in February. Um, in mid-February, I'll be doing a tour with my buddy Matthew Human, mm -hmm. um, who previously was a part of the Human Revolution, was his band, and um, he's coming over from Nashville. And we're doing a bunch of dates, playing Charlie's on the, um, let's see, I think it's Friday or Saturday, I think it's February 16th or 17th, forget, somewhere in there. Um, you can check out my website again to get the dates. Um, and yeah. Human is, a, is, is a, the name, you know, it, 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 it actually is, he is very human. He's a, yeah. a, a real wonderful spirit. He's very grounded and very playful, very creative, uh -huh. and a wonderful musician. Yeah, his, he, song, his songs uh, really, uh, uh, you know, touch the heart like yours do. Yeah, he and I kind of have a similar influence, and um, we, we we met each other recently and, and um, played a couple shows together and it felt really good and we have the um, same kind of message, you know, and the same kind of music we want to share. So decided to combine forces and put, a, um, he's bringing some of his bandmates over from the mainland. Great. And so we got a full little tour booked and we're going to go to Kauai at the end of February, do a couple dates there. Um, but pretty much most of the dates are here in Maui. Playing Lahaina, playing Makua third Friday in February. Mm -hmm. Playing, uh, out in Kipahulu, we're gonna do a little misto, a little secret show out in, uh, at the Kalena Triangle, mm -hmm. across from Lali, Lalima Farm Stand, and um, playing up country at my friend's farm uh, in Olinda, Pono Grown Farm. So we're doing some little farm events and a couple bigger dates at Charlie's and whatnot, so really stoked and looking forward to that. And your website is, is always a good source to learn yep. about these things. Yeah, just patsimmonsjr.com. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, you know, your, your song about justice um, it m makes me mindful and, and uh, you know, of things here on Maui like uh, water rights. 
um, that I know that 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 has as an issue you know captured your heart and mind um, you know what's you know what's important about water um, and and why is that important to you why is water important to me Wow that's a big one well you know I grew up first of all what comes to mind is that I grew up exploring the watershed of um, East Maui <laughs> the watersheds of East Maui and um, I grew up jumping waterfalls and hiking around and picking wild fruit. And then as I got older, I started to realize that there was old stone walls and old taro patches and old archeological sites throughout these valleys where the water once was utilized for food. And um, that's something that I really uh, feel inspired about is just to continue sharing my um, mana'o about um, growing kalo and restoring the stream water so that people can eat and um, carry on their traditional um, agriculture. And um, I, you know, I grew up with a good friend at Haiku School whose family farms down Honopo Valley, Lo'ikalo. And so once in a while I go down and help them in the taro patch and I've gotten my, my feet muddy. And um, yeah, really what I see happening to the water these days on the island is, is um, appalling. And as most of us know, um, the the stealing of the water is just that and has been an illegal process. And um, I, um, I care deeply about the, the stream rights and for not just me and not just the Hawaiians that are alive today, but again, for the future generations. And we have to think about them. What we're doing today is not, it's not about us so much. It's about the future generations. And I think when our policymakers and our elders who are you know, making the, the choices on these legislative levels, once they start to realize that and start to make their actions each day affect the future generations in a positive way, I think that we're gonna get a lot, a lot more done here. And I, I see that the candidates coming up who we really need to vote for um, this, this year in 2018 um, to run and make big decisions um, for Maui County, we need to choose the candidates wisely and the ones that are thinking about the future generations and and the environmental and social well-being of our community then um, those are the ones to <laughs> to vote for <laughs> and i want to share one more song before it gets you know pow here and um, this song i shared this a while ago on on, on uh, akaku and it's still the message is still relevant and it's just that um, the song is called future generation and um, i wrote it a while ago when bernie sanders was running for mm -hmm. president Somebody said, hey, Pat, you should write a song for the Bernie Sanders campaign movement. So I said, oh, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I really want to write a Bernie song, but I'll write a song about presidency and about leadership and about what that means and what that is and what it's not. And so this is a message to anyone out there who's a leader in the community, candidate, whatever. It's all about the future generation. <laughs> It's not about me, it's not about this show, it's not about the music, it's not about what I know, it's not about you, it's not about them, it's all about the future generation. It's not about money, it's not about growth, it's not about business, it's not about that sacred oath. It's not about you, it's not about them It's all about the future generation If you wanna do good, if you wanna do plenty If you really want to end the fight Please pay close attention to what is right it's not about war, it's not about disease, it's not about policy, it's not about safety, it's not about you, it's not about them, it's all about the future generation. If you wanna do good, if you wanna do plenty, if you really wanna end the fight, Please pay close attention to what is right It's not about me, it's 
not about this show, it's not about the music, it's not about what I know, it's not about you, it's not about them, it's all about the future generation, it's not about you, it's not about them, it's all about the future generation, it's not about you. It's not about them, it's all about the future generation. <laughs> future generation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm so thankful and so happy for you to have that you've been able to, you know, grow up in a real rock and roll family uh, and in that environment in, in you know, a, a, a very particular cultural aspect of American life, yet be so grounded uh, by your lifestyle here in Maui to be able to uh, bring those together uh, into the kind of music that you create and share with people, that's a real gift. Thank you, um, That's that. a, a real rarity, you know, we see so many of the kids of rock and rollers crash and burn uh, because they w were pandered to or they had too much given to them. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's very refreshing to see you living a lifestyle where you're independent and you know choosing to make your own way uh, in the world and live simply and uh, uh, work for a living uh, and and not uh, feed off the tit of that rock and roll uh, uh, engine. Uh, well, I'm do, doing my best, you know. It's, I, even uh, growing up, you know, in a gifted family you know I'm a privileged you know I'm a privileged human and um, within that I'm still doing my best to, to grow food and um, you know be able to harvest things from the land each day for my family to eat and you know I'm not like fully uh, independent of my family I'm still you know living on my family's land and you know they're still helping me out and I'm doing my best you know it's not easy to, to, to make it as a musician no. And it's a lot different than it was when my father was my age. And um, so I'm doing my best. And, you know, part of that is also having some side gigs and stuff, too. I grow food and, you know, I'll be chopping coconuts at the market, you know, in exchange for coconuts, most likely. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm just doing my best. I'm just a haiku boy when it comes down to it. I was raised in haiku, North Shore, Hamakualoa. And, um, yeah, just everything that, um, everything that I um, experience is so much uh, connected to this place. And um, I hope to continue raising my family here and not have to leave because everything gets too expensive or what, you know, because so many people are leaving because just that. They have no choice. And, um, They're being driven out. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And um, I know people who own large chunks of land and then they're not sure what they should do, if they should sell part of them and make a lot of money or if they should keep farming or what. And, you know, it's, we're in a big, um, crossroads here like we yeah. always have been and um, it's the 125th year of the US occupation here and um, it's time it's time for the for change it's time for Huli the system already and we want to see change and it's really we can't just wait around for it um, we got to make it happen and it's kind of what I'm doing with my tree planting I'm not sitting around waiting for trees to get <laughs> planted I'm doing my best to go out there and plant them each day and and so that I can eat from them, and my keiki can eat from them, and um, and so my community can eat from them. And your support for uh, candidates and initiatives going into November, will you be, uh, for instance, performing at a, a fundraising for, I know it's early in that yeah, scheduling, yeah. there's probably nothing formulated yet, but are you mindful of, of going out in, in support of the local candidates? Definitely, I would say um, I'm, yeah, 110% I'm in, you know, I, I wanna see, um, the young people really take initiative and step up because it's a lot of young people don't vote as we know and um, it's it's time for the next generation to step into our adulthood and our um, ch power of choice so um, obviously there's a lot of us that just don't believe in the American system and we want to completely live under the radar and not vote and not pay taxes or what 
there's a lot of people out there that, that have that mentality, but um, that's great, but it's not necessarily gonna stop the big industries from <laughs> taking over pieces of land and exploiting our natural resources and our people. Um, this land is not for sale. That's, you know, this, this water is not for sale. The mountain is not for sale. We're not for sale. <laughs> And registering to vote is not attached to any governmental process. People, some people think wrongly that you get uh, selected for jury duty because you registered to vote. Jury duty is actually connected to your driver's license. So if unless you're going the entire distance of not even having a, a, a Hawaii driver's list mm. license, um, you know, you are already a part of the system. So not voting is not getting you anywhere. Yeah, and we're lucky that we have people like Trinette Furtado mm -hmm. and Alika Atai and Ellie Cochran stepping up to, to, to um, you know, spend time in an office signing papers and, and helping put their energy into making legislation come through that's gonna benefit everybody, on the local people and the environment. Um, you know, I was offered to run for county council once. Somebody's like, you should run for county council. I'm like, well, I, I like to spend too much time outside. I'm not, a, I'm not an indoor guy, so I take it. I, I, I give thanks for the people who are willing to step up and go and put themselves in offices it's so, that we can, so that we can live the lifestyle that we wanna live outside. Right. So um, I'm definitely gonna be right there this season helping to promote and um, um, you know, explain to, to young people why they need to step up this year and vote because um, our water is on the line, our cake year on the line, the, you know, the food is on the line, the trees are on the line. Our reefs. <laughs> There's a lot the shoreline. going on. Yeah. You know, the, the, the degradation of our shoreline, both in terms of access and the, just the physical, uh, 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 you know, where the beach is and beach erosion. Um, you know, there uh, we've had so much unconsidered development. Um, there are issues coming up here in Maui County um, uh, over uh, uh, land and land development. Um, and it's very, very important for the public to understand that our land development system has been exploited for decades. If you ever wonder uh, how it is that that particular $14 million beach home got to be built at that location where obviously no home should ever have been built, if you ever wondered what went on to make that happen, well, we can show you that now. And Maui Causes is dedicated to bringing that story to the public. Um, we are, knock on wood, going to be making a presentation to the county council. I personally have testified to the county council on numerous occasions about the abuse that has been taken place through deferral agreements and manipulation of shoreline management areas, special management areas, SMA minor permits. Um, and this culture of leniency that the county has had towards any developer stepping forward wanting to build anything anywhere with no rules. They do everything that they can to subvert the rules. And the shoreline is, I just want to interject real Please. quick, sorry to interrupt, but the shoreline, no. the shoreline and the Kahakai is not just a place to walk around and suntan and lounge about. It used to be and still is a refrigerator for a lot of people who live here. I, I myself know many people in my neighborhood, in my community who fish regularly on a daily basis right. and go out and provide food for their family right. every day and pickle pihi and gather limu. And these are natural resources that were once extremely abundant here in Hawaii, right. where our fisheries and our coastal habitat was very abundant in food. And so that's the main, um, one of the main messages I have as, as um, you know, a country boy is that we need to eat and the beaches need to kept, be kept healthy so that people can eat. And, and it is a fundamental <laughs> right, you know, uh, for especially for the Hawaiian culture um, that uh, chooses to live a traditional subsistence lifestyle. To be able to live off of the land is a cultural right. And the environmental abuses um, it, it amounts essentially to w w environmental racism. That 
the, the, the natural resources that are an entitlement of a culture are being stripped away against their will. They're being destroyed out from under them. And that is a form, environmental racism is a thing. Um, it's why, you know, here in Maui County, for instance, a proposal gets floated to build some form of low-income housing, but doing it only in an area that's really swampy or has already environmental problems anyway, because th that's the only place that the developers are willing to let go cheap enough so that it could be low-income housing. Yeah. That's also environmental racism. Yeah. And there's good things happening with our community and our coastlines, too. There's a lot of people stepping up to educate about our coastal habitat and one of, I want to put a shout out right now to uh, the Kipahulu Ohana mm. out in Kipahulu Hana Maui Hana side of Maui um, the Kipahulu Ohana is a nonprofit and they're doing um, a lot of work to educate people about o Opihi habitat restoration and mm. limu and fisheries and hopefully that they hopefully that mentality and that model can be expanded throughout the whole island so that our whole coastal habitat is um, you know protected in some way our guest here has been <laughs> Pat Simmons Jr. Thank you, Pat, so much for, hey, for joining us on the show and joining us. Thank and thank you, you know, for all the, uh, the the positive vibes you put out into the community. It, Mahalo. It, it's well appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, check out my website, patsimmonsjr.com. There you go. Join us again on Maui Causes uh, at MauiCauses.org. Please make a donation to support the activities that we do here. We need your support. Um, we haven't really been asking for it, but you know, it, there's a lot that needs to get done um, I, uh, coming uh, into this election season, and we need to get people's attention, and we need some financial support to be able to do that. Please do that, MauiCauses.org. Aloha, see you again. This program is brought to you as a public service by Maui Causes. Maui Causes is a crowd-funded media production group that provides media production services to a variety of environmental and progressive causes here in Maui County. Visit us on the web at www.mauicauses.org.